Hello Rust developers and welcome to the Rust project video series. If you want to learn anything about Rust, this is your channel. Rust navigation, Rust with drones, Rust for autonomous cars, everything Rust is here. Learn Rust step by step and push your Rust learning in just 10 minutes of video. I am Marco Arruda and today we are going to learn how uh, about Rust and gazebo controllers and how we have to add it to a simulation. In this video we will learn how to set the controllers for each joint of a given robot and send reference commands to these controllers. But before anything else, remember to visit the Robot Ignite Academy, our online academy where you'll find practical online ROS courses using simulated robots. No installation is required. You'll find a link to the academy on the video description. So now let's start with the fourth episode of this series. And in order to keep going with that, I'm going to use RDS as usual, ROS Development Studio provided by the Construct. So I'm going to start from the previous video project, which is video number three. So let me open the project here. And as you can see, we have some files open in the IDE. Let's put it bigger. And let's start an empty simulation and open a terminal. So first thing is that uh, our main goal here is to implement the controllers and send commands to the robot. So first thing is that our robot is too complex. So we have six joints here and I don't want to work to implement everything for all the joints in this first moment. So the first thing I'm going to do is just simplify the robot. Okay, so I'm going to just, I'm going to leave only the first three links and only two joints. So I'm going to comment the rest of the robot like this. This is an XML file. This is the way of commenting an XML file. Okay. And now you have a much simpler robot. Let's spawn it to the simulation so we can see my robotic simulator, my robotic manipulator spawn. Let's wait a few seconds and we shall have it in the simulation. There it is. So we have only three links and two joints and that's enough to learn about controllers. Okay. So first thing we have to add here is that we have created a package to use only URDF. But now we have to add some dependencies to our package. And this is where I'm going to start from. So first thing in this make list file, I have to add some dependencies, which are the controller manager and joint state controller and robot state publisher as well. Okay. And the same thing, of course, you have to do in the package XML file. So we have to add some the same dependencies as build depend and run, run depend. So Let's do this first for controller manager and then joint state manager, joint state controller and robot state publisher. Same thing here. This is very important. Uh, we can break a line here just to make it clear. So we have the same dependencies for build depend and run depend. Okay. So next modification is that in order to use the controllers, we have to modify our robot model. And for each joint we want to control, we have to add a new element here and it's called transmission. Okay, so let me copy the first example here and I can explain line by line what we are doing. So we can start like this transmission and we have to define a name. Okay. Uh, okay. It's better if I copy and paste. Great. So I have defined it here, this new element called transmission and the name of the transmission is trans and I'm using the same, uh, the same pattern of the joint names. Okay. So this is the transmission related to this joint here. We have to define the type of transmission, which in this case is just a simple transmission. Okay. The name of the joint, 
we are referring. So the same name we have defined it here to this joint. And hardware interface. In this case, we are using uh, E4 joint interface because uh, at the end we are sending E4 commands. But you're going to see that we're going to send position uh, reference. But in the background, the controller is sending E4 to the joint. OK. And that's why we have to define it for the joint and for an actuator as well. And here I'm calling, I'm using the same name of the joint, but with a prefix called motor. OK. And we can also define a mechanical reduction. In this case, I don't want to define it. so just keep it a value equals to one. OK. And we have to define the same thing for the next joint. So again, a transmission, but now for the second joint. OK, as you can see, we're using the same name here. OK, so that's the first thing we, we have to, to add to our robot model. The next thing we have to modify a little our spawn launch file because we have to do some we have to add some notifications here first thing is that we have to group everything we are launching here to a common namespace that's why I'm gonna do to create this group here uh, if you don't know yet what this tag does you can see at the description of the video a reference to to launch files, okay, and now let's put some comments here because this is this launch file is becoming bigger. So first thing is to define a robot model, and then we spawn the robot model. Later, we are going to load the controllers because we are going to define some parameters to the robot load controllers okay and this is a file we are yet to, it's yet to be created so just a minute uh, after that we have to launch a controller so this is how we do this now we are using this package here controller manager and we're calling it control spawner. This executable is called spawner. And these are the parameters. So respawn equals to false, output equals to screen because I want to see the errors, the logs, and informations, any kind of warning. And again, we have to define the namespace. This is very important. Despite the fact we have defined it here at the group tag, the namespace, we have to define again in the controller spawner. Okay, so pay attention to that. The namespace here. And again, as an argument, namespace equals to the same namespace we have defined before. So slash my robotic manipulator three times here in the same file. OK. And we are launching here. We are spawning three controllers. And we have the final timeout of a minute. OK. So now let's go to the configuration file. First thing, this is a uh, jump file so we have to create inside our package uh, config folder and inside this folder let's create a file called joints yml let's open this file and I'm gonna just copy and explain what we're doing okay so for this file we have to define uh, like this first thing is that we're using joint state controller so this is the the basic we're using it here okay and for each joint we have to define a joint position controller so that's why i'm calling joint one position controller the type of the controller is joint position controller and it comes from effort controllers so we are sending an effort to the joints but we want to control the position of the joint okay and i have to give here the name of the joint. This name comes from the chakra file. Uh, it can be confusing because we have used some parameters just to explore more what we can do with chakras. 
but that's the final name of the joint. Uh, here we have base link and link 01. That's why I have like this base link, link 01. And for the second joint, link 1, link 2. And the same kind of joint comes from Ford controllers. We are controlling the position of the joint. Okay, and I have to find just some uh, values that were enough to send some comments and see the robot moving. Okay, but of course, this is not, uh, we're not studying control techniques, so of course, you can optimize this. Okay, and finally, let's check here. Uh, we have defined so CMake file, package, dependencies. We have created the configuration file. Uh, we have changed the chakra file here. And one thing is very important is that at the end of the chakra file, we have to include a new instruction here is that we are using a gazebo plugin. So this is really important. We have to add at the end of the file this gazebo tag. Let me remove. Okay, so we have gazebo tag, and inside the gazebo tag, we are including the plugin gazebo ROS control. And this is the name of the library. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. This is always the same. Okay, and finally, we can test it. So let's launch an empty simulation again. And to this empty simulation, let's wait for it. In the meantime, we're going to choose the shell to spawn the robot again. So, ROS launch, robotic manipulator, spawn. And the robot shall appear in a couple of seconds. And there it is. As you can see, we have some new logs here related to the controllers. We're loading the controllers. And this time, the links of the robot are not falling down. So that's because we have the controllers set up. Okay, so let's test it. Uh, you can check in the shell that we have some new topics here. So Rust top list. We have some new topics for each joint and some new services as well for the controllers. Okay. And you can send the commands just publishing to these topics. Let me, let me do this. So Rust top pub minus one. I want to publish just once uh, to the topic my robotic manipulator joint number two uh, slash command I want to send 0.7 and we may see some okay there it is and the robot moves to that position okay now let's try to the to join number one so it has to rotate great there it is Let's try a different value. And there it is. This is really nice. So now you can use ROS controllers to move the joints, to send commands to the joints of your robot. Okay. Uh, in the next video, we are going to fill all of the robot joints with these controllers and make use of it. Okay. And that's all for today. In the description of the video, you'll find a complete course about ROS controllers and all the resources mentioned in the video. Did you like the video? If you did, please give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to our channel and press the bell for a new video every day. If you liked the video or not, please share your thoughts and questions in the comments area. See you!